We are back with Selena Jamal, a young woman who experienced painful abandonment and abuse in her life and eventually found herself pregnant and alone. That's how we ended the interview at part one. You, uh, everyone wanted you to get rid of your pregnancy and you were all alone and then you started having some complications. What happened? So I was trying to figure out like, how do I have this child that I chose to keep and walk it out with forgiveness? Like, mm. how do I have a child from someone I can't stand, pretty much, because of all the pain he caused me? Mm. So I, I reached out to the church. I had a friend that was going to the church, and I reached out to the church, and I had an interview to meet with a care pastor, and I wasn't able to make it. So he called me when I was in the hospital bed after I ruptured, um, and he just explained to me, he was on the phone with me for an hour, and he just he said, cry out to God. And you actually, when you said you rupture, like you were in a medical situation where they basically told you that there was no hope for your baby to live. Yes, yes. So, What were your thoughts at that time? Because everyone else had left you, and then here was this hope in this child. To lose that would have just devastated you. Yeah, I was like, at the end of myself completely, I was like, what am I gonna do if I lose this child? I have nothing left. Mm. So it's just her holding on to her and then I just called out to God that night. So yeah, this pastor tells you to call out to God. This hasn't you know, been your practice mm -hmm. up to this point. So tell me what that conversation was like or was it even a conversation? I just called out to him and said, I don't know who you are and I just, I need your help right now. I know that I've never came to you in my life and I've just been looking for you and I just want to know your love. I just want to know that you care for me. And he answered. I heard him so clear for the first time, like, I'm here and I'll never forsake you and I will redeem this. You have a beautiful little girl right now, Mia. We have some photos of yes. her. She is gorgeous. It's been two years since that day. Tell me what's changed in your life now these two years. It's like I have a purpose, like the void that I was looking for everywhere else is just filled. Like it's like a... It's like filling a, pave, a hole in the pavement. It was just God just filled it with that love and peace and I can walk in trust and I don't have to try to control everything. And there are days where I still try to control everything. Like I'm still on this walk. Like I'm in the middle of the wilderness right now actually like with healing and God's just trying to deliver me of all this past pain and stuff. So. It's kind of like, you know, sometimes as, as people of faith, I think we say, oh, you come to Christ and it's all done. No. But actually it's the beginning, right? And then yes. there's the walking out of letting God heal your heart and forgiving people. Now you said you were bitter and angry most of your life. Mm -hmm. uh, are you still that way? No, no. I have my days where I'm just like, I get offended when someone does something to me, but it's like, I'll take it to the Lord and I'll ask him to give me his eyes to see the way they are because hurt people hurt and they're broken too. So I have more of his eyes to see like, this person's probably reacting because they're hurt or they were hurt in this way. And mm -hmm. it's able to give me that empathy as well, so. What would you say to somebody watching maybe who does feel that void? They do feel like people have abandoned them and hurt them and they just, you know, they're, they're looking for something real. I would just say like what God said to me, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. And he's just waiting like a father with open arms, waiting for his children to come back to him. Mm. And his blessings and his grace are abundant. So it's just, it's amazing. It's your first time telling your story. Thank yeah. you so much for trusting us with it. Thank you. And we want to keep following your journey. We'll be praying for you and cheering you on as you're on this healing journey. Thanks for coming today. Thank you so much for having me. And I think those are great words for us to remember whatever you're going through today, wherever you are, maybe you haven't even started your, pers your spiritual journey or maybe you've been on it for 50 years. Wherever you are, God says, I will never leave you or forsake you no matter what you're facing today. If you need someone to pray with you, please give our prayer lines a call. That number is on your screen. We would love to pray with you and journey through whatever you're facing today.